Welcome back to the Dr. Rich channel. We all know and love Dr. Mike. He's essentially the godfather of the medical YouTuber universe, a brilliant clinician and doctor. He recently, though, did a video on robotic surgery that brought us some issues that today we're going to unpack. Make sure to stick around to the end to hear the truth about robotics in my 15-year experience with the technology. All right, so we'll get into it. So the setup here is Dr. Mike is watching and reacting to a video of a kid that invented his own surgical robot as opposed to the Da Vinci robot. I will watch and comment and react again on top of the reaction given my 3000 robotic surgery experience. Slow it and they don't have any travel distance. Instead, we're gonna mount the surgical tools to a rail system that can move anywhere on the operating table. Time out. I think the reason the Da Vinci robot doesn't freely move around the patient is because you want it locked into place when you're doing a minimally invasive procedure. You want it done in a specific area. I mean like millimeters, millimeters matter. That's actually one of the selling points of these uh, robotic machines is that they have a better range of motion uh, than the human hand. They also are more precise. And when the surgeon actually looks inside with the camera, they can see 10X the magnification so they can be more accurate. Okay, so here he's right on point. Uh, the Da Vinci robot is designed to have very meticulous small movements to enhance the dexterity uh, that the surgeon already has. So. You could be a very skilled surgeon with your hands through an open incision or with a laparoscope. And once you get on the robotic platform, it's computer assisted surgery. So you're doing the surgery, your movements in space are translated to the little tiny robotic instruments into much smaller movements. So everything is more precise. Look at that lighting system. What kind of surgery is this? Do you think this is like a, uh, a prostate bio? Oh, they're doing a little flap on the grape. Is this in slow motion or is that how fast the machine moves? I know minimally invasive surgery generally takes longer and the patient has to be under anesthesia longer. Sometimes that could make certain patients who want minimally invasive not good candidates if they can't be under anesthesia for a long time. I've had patients ruled out uh, for robotic surgery just because of that. So here, Mike is a little bit off. For every surgery that a surgeon and every modality the surgeon's going to learn, there's gonna be an associated learning curve. Uh, the core fundamental surgery that surgeons learn is how to do surgery through an open incision. That's the way it's been for centuries. Um, the advances that have come about in laparoscopic surgery over the last 30, 40 years, and then robotic surgery over the last 20 years are innovations that give patients better outcomes. But there's a lot of technology and it's typically learned after you get your fundamental learning curve done with open surgery. And a lot of the literature that looks at that reflects surgeons doing cases in their learning curve during laparoscopic and robotic as opposed to surgeons, uh, the same surgeons who have already become experts at open surgery. Uh, the little robot's hands have such amazing range of motion, it's better than our human hands. And that's what makes this super special as a type of technology. Because when you have to go into tight areas, into tight crevices, you need really great range of motion. And remember, when you're looking at this with the naked eye, it's hard to see where the skin begins and the grape ends. Strike that, reverse it. Where the grape begins and the skin ends. So Dr. Mike is right on point here. The robot is these little tiny instruments as opposed to your big hands inside tiny spaces. It just makes the surgery easier, makes it more efficient and better. Uh, in fact, there's high quality evidence research that shows that patients are more likely to end up with an open incision if you do the surgery laparoscopically as opposed to using the robot. So it basically empowers us to provide more of our patients with a minimally invasive outcome when that was the intention from the beginning. I wanna answer some of the top questions that I get from patients when they are either considering getting robotic surgery or someone has recommended it to them and they're afraid. Who does the surgery, the doctor or the robot? The surgeons are controlling the robotic device 100, 100%. So absolutely, this is a question that uh, we get asked not as much anymore. 
Uh, but certainly when the robotic platform first came out, patients were afraid. They're like, well, I don't want some robot to do surgery. I want you to do surgery. But yeah, exactly correct. Um, the surgeon sits down at a console and he puts his head into a viewer, which gives him three-dimensional visualization uh, within the surgical, within the operative field. Um, and he has two little joysticks that he holds and those enable him to move the instrument arms around in the patient, but it is a 100% command control system. The surgeon uh, does the movement and the robot uh, translates that movement into the smaller little tiny robot hands. What are the differences between robotic surgery and open surgery? The difference between robotic surgery, which is considered a minimally invasive surgery compared to open is generally faster recovery times, less bleeding, less side effects. Patients actually spend less time in the hospital as a result. Basically, you're making smaller incisions, and at times you don't even need to make incisions, obviously depending where the procedure is. Now, not every patient is a candidate for robotic surgery or minimally invasive surgery, so it needs to be discussed on an individual level, but something to also keep in mind, robotic surgery is really expensive, even when compared to other minimally invasive surgeries. So, a lot to unpack there, but for sure, uh, Dr. Mike is absolutely right. Robotic is considered a minimally invasive type of surgery along with uh, laparoscopic or a vaginal approach in gynecology compared to open surgery. It has all the benefits that he mentioned, less blood loss, quicker recovery, less pain, uh, quicker return to work, quicker return to normal activities. So you would always want to do a minimally invasive surgery as opposed to an open surgery for all those benefits and not least of which you don't end up with a big scar on your abdomen, you have little tiny incisions. Now, uh, there is a question of cost. I mean, certainly the robot has a cost. Uh, the maintenance of the robot has a cost. The instruments have a cost, but you know, cost, the argument of cost is kind of a tip of the iceberg uh, argument. People think of cost in terms of, you know, how much does it cost to buy the robot? But what we have to realize is every major hospital in the entire country already has a robot. That cost is already built in to the system. And if you look at a per case cost, uh, compared to other minimally invasive surgeries in an efficient program, um, it's essentially cost neutral. The cost is already built in. The hospitals already purchased the robot. The other cost thing that really needs to be considered when you look at uh, robotics is it was designed as a system to advance the reach of surgeons uh, in converting uh, open surgeries into minimally invasive surgeries and effectively it's done that in every single specialty 90% of urology prostate surgeries are done robotically 51% of all hysterectomies are now done robotically and general surgery continues to grow and grow and it's doing that because it's allowing surgeons to take surgeries that would be big scars lots of pain long recovery and converting those into minimally invasive surgery. So understand that the robot was designed to convert the open surgeries to minimally invasive surgeries. And unquestionably, open surgery costs way more than robotics because the patient has to stay in the hospital for two days, three days, seven days, and every day in the hospital is $2,500. Well, the entire cost of the surgery is $2,500. So, the relevant comparator here is robotic versus open. And with robotic, you're hands down saving money. And even when you look at robotics compared to other minimally invasive surgeries, in most cases, it ends up being relatively cost neutral if you're not trying to amortize the cost of the robot into each of the surgeries. Are there any procedures where robotic surgery doesn't work? There's absolutely procedures where robotic surgery doesn't work, and we have to tailor that to each individual patient. So when I have a patient that comes to me for a surgical clearance, one of the questions the surgeons ask is the cardiac status of the patient, the uh, comorbidities, what is the patient taking medication-wise? All of these things are factored in, in addition to the type of surgery that needs to be performed. Some surgeries just fare better as open surgeries than minimally invasive. So Dr. Mike is correct. Some surgeries just don't do as well and really aren't uh, amenable to a robotic or even a minimally invasive platform. So this would be trauma surgery where, you know, there's an unknown process going on. There's ongoing blood loss. The trauma surgeon just has to get in there, you know, a gunshot wound and get it fixed, okay? But virtually all elective surgeries 
have that opportunity, have that ability to be either an open surgery or a minimally invasive surgery. Um, certainly, as he said, there are some cardiopulmonary issues, uh, issues of ventilation during the surgery, since the surgeons have to be kind of tilted with their head down, that limit uh, robotic surgery. I can tell you from experience though, um, I have not scheduled an open surgery for 10 years. So all the surgeries I do are minimally invasive uh, as they're elective in my particular area of specialty in gynecology and urogynecology. Um, there are very few exceptions in an expert's hand, uh, but probably way fewer exceptions than you might think listening to that response. Can any doctor or surgeon use a Da Vinci machine? Any doctor or surgeon that's trained on a Da Vinci machine can use it, but you do need that level of training. You can't just come on and start using it like Michael Reeves, where you can come on and figure out how it works. No, it's more complicated than that. You absolutely need to be trained and certified. So he's exactly right. Um, not everybody can do robotic surgery, but I do think that uh, we need to unpack a little bit more um, the, the maker of the surgical robot, the intuitive surgical, uh, they actually have a very robust training program that's required for surgeons to uh, be able to use the technology. And I would say way more extensive than any other device maker or manufacturer on the market. The surgeon that wants to participate has to do an observation of a surgeon that's already doing it, has to do online training modules. They then have to go and work on either an animal or an inanimate lab. Uh, they then have to go uh, have a case list of the equivalent surgeries from open and a proctor surgeon has to actually come out review uh, how they do the surgery, has to sign off. And then there's a currency requirement, meaning that if they don't do X number of surgeries uh, every year on an ongoing basis, their privileges would then, uh, and their credentials would then lapse and they'd be taken away. So I think that um, the introduction of surgical robotics has actually really bolstered our training and credentialing uh, that we have as surgeons and keep all of us accountable. Will robotic surgical systems make doctors obsolete? Doctors are humans. Humans need to treat humans. While there's certain things that we can allow the AI to do, help us better identify certain things on radiographic images, help us uh, find information faster, they cannot replace the mandatory human connection when treating a patient. So absolutely, uh, the human connection uh, can't be replicated. I will say that there was a high quality evidence study out of the UK that showed that AI and machine learning actually outperformed radiologists when it came to detecting breast cancer lesions. And this is only gonna kinda get more and more advanced. So for those specialties like radiology and pathology that don't have a huge element, um, there potentially is in the near short term the possibility of a lot of those jobs being replaced by AI and machine learning. Now, surgical robotics, um, the reality is that a surgeon uh, has to learn the technique and they can get through a learning curve and they can do a procedure at the fastest that they can do it. But machines can actually be trained and taught to do simple tasks like suturing and actually put all of those things together. So, I mean, we are looking at, in potentially the next 10, 15 years, um, robots being able to do most of the surgeries that we're doing. Um, the, the, the practical matter of it is that it will be used as an assistant technology to help the surgeon do better surgeries. Are the results of surgeries conducted with Da Vinci worth the cost? This is one of the most important questions and why robotic surgery is actually a hotly contested subject. Remember, you have two different options for minimally invasive, laparoscopic and robotic. Robotic, at times, can be really expensive and not worth the benefit. So where do we go from here? Ideally, we wanna lower the cost of these robotic surgeries so that they can replace laparoscopic procedures but not cost the healthcare system something like three to five billion dollars a year. Also, there are certain things that can be happening in the near future where we can improve these systems and perhaps get the evidence to show that they're better than the laparoscopic minimally invasive surgery. So robotic cost is always gonna be a hotly debated topic. Uh, the reality though is this is an evolution of surgery and this is where surgery is going. So in urology, as I mentioned, 90% of prostates are done robotically. In gynecology, uh, the majority, 51% of hysterectomies are now done robotically and it's the physician recognized benefit. 
all of the laparoscopic industry partners that are competing with uh, Intuitive for these types of surgeries, they are all making their own surgical robots now because they see the value, they know this is the future, and they know this is where it's going. The other thing to keep in mind is that as competition comes into the market, and also in general with all technology, over time, cost comes down. And so we're already functioning efficiently, comparatively, superior to open surgeries, competitively to minimally invasive surgeries. Um, again, the majority of surgeries are being done robotically now, so this is the future. Um, and more and more evidence, like the studies that I've already talked about, is going to uh, uh, come to light that continues to extol the benefits of robotic surgery. So that was a great video. I always learn stuff from watching Dr. Mike's channel. Um, this was a case where I thought we could use some additional data, some updating. Uh, hopefully you found it helpful and please share.